Hi, Chin Chin. I thought I left you with your father. Oh, hang on. We're here. We're here, we're here. There you are. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Welcome. Come in. Are you are you organised? Have you got yourself a drink? Good evening. Are you all good? Yes, the get Robert Chandler, go away. The sound was crackly to start with. It's not now. It would have been crackly if you had it up that loud. Hello. How are you? Um, oh, she freaked me out because he just came from nowhere with my volume up and I've already turned mine down. Are you good? Sue McGonchi, how are you feeling, darling? Are you feeling a little bit better? Um, I hope you are. And and um, we have your parcel here. So you've placed an order and I have <laughs> I have one day of the soiree kits for you and Margaret ended up with the other one. So I'm seeing her tomorrow and then I will we will combine them all into a love package and send them off to you. So we're really, really sorry that you um that you missed that you missed the weekend and I'd like to tell you it was terrible but it wasn't. It was a good time. Uh, so who else is here? This really is like putting the game back together tonight, isn't it? Gail and Pam, good evening to you with Glennis. Hello. Kristen, thank you for joining us. Um, Sylvia's here. Oh, man, it's been so long. Um, Lynn, hello. Joe, hi again. Bernadette, good evening. Sue, oh, thank you, Sue. It's lovely to be back. And look, it's it's not for a... um. It's just for a short time and a good time, not a long time tonight, because I just missed you. I just I just decided that we really should do a show, and I did mean to put it up last night, but the Facebook was a little bit funny yesterday. If anyone was trying to post an event, um, it was playing up, so I managed to do it this morning. And I thought, look, whoever's got time to pop in, and have a quick have a quick drink. Um, this this is not apple juice, okay? You may judge, but it's it's not. And so Rob and I were just having a little drink and dinner and I just, you know, just thought it would be nice now to sit down and have a chat. Good evening, Anne. How are things in Tassie? Hello, Sharon. Catherine Douse, good evening. <laughs> She's watching from the club. Do I want to know which club? I don't know which club. Catherine, which club are you at? It could be any, many clubs. Cheryl, how are things in Dubbo? Denise Castle, hello to you. Louise, it was lovely to see you on the weekend. Um, good evening, Jimmy. Hello, Del. Lynn's here. Wendy, we missed you too. We've got your kits organised for you. Elizabeth, hello. Good morning. Elizabeth, the time differences, I think, now align better for all of us, for you, me, Tash, and everyone, because we go through the, we're on daylight saving, and then you come off summer, and then we come off summer, and then there's this really bad bit in the middle where the time difference is, is not good. But I think we're all back to good timing for everyone now. I was chatting with John Coleman as he drove home after finishing his mail orders at 1am uh, this morning and we, we agreed, even though he was still up at 1am, that the time we like this time difference window the best out of all of them. Um, I'm very glad you're feeling better, Sue. Yvonne Collinson, good evening. Have you recovered from the soiree? I'm going to be brutally honest this evening. No, <laughs> no I haven't yet. Um, the uh, the team uh, stayed back and had dinner at the Garfield pub, which has become a little bit of a tradition. But as um, as Denise Classon picked up at about two o'clock on Sunday, I think my I let my smile drop a little bit. I was starting to feel a little under the weather, and I was crook. Uh, crook is the only term to use um, most of Monday and Tuesday, so I lost that magic me day on the Monday, and I'm just I'm slowly catching up. Um, but I'm very happy to report that we're up to date with all the orders except for Prue. I've still got an order to get out. I held on to Prue's because I thought, Prue, you might have had some of this stuff to go out. And if it did today, Steve missed combining your orders and I've got a couple of others there that will go out. Ginny, get out from behind there. I asked your father to look after you. It's like having a toddler in the house tonight. Um, everyone's orders, except for about three normal orders of their back orders of Under the Australian Sun, left the building today so it was a little bit of a juggle but it all arrived as planned at the new Chandler's Cottage property and Steve was down there doing other things he grabbed the bolts and you might think it's a bit funny we sent it down there and not to here but we're talking three full pallets worth and so we had it sent down there we brought back what we needed and everyone's orders went out this afternoon which I am very happy about that we managed to get them done that quick and it was, um, yeah, so that's done. 
and then I'm firing up for next week. There's so much about to happen uh, with work, N not just moving, the work as well, So, which I'm really happy about. Um, I'm glad you had a lovely weekend, Yvonne. Sharon Keys, good evening to you. <laughs> Thank you. Kathy's here too. Good evening, Kathy. Robin, hello. Karen DeWilt, hello. It was also lovely to see you on the weekend. Janine, hello. Kieran, hi. Um, who else is here? Elizabeth Schultz, hello to you. Yvonne Chapman, hi. Margaret and Kathy, wow, everyone's here. Good evening, Denise. So far, I haven't killed them. No, don't. I, she didn't give me pets or anything. They were plants. To straight. They're still alive. They're still going so far, but it's only been three days. Um, so, Rosemary, hello to you. We should be all good. Kath, I think everyone can hear me. Yes. And who else have I got? Louise. Joe. Joy. Mel. Mel, I've seen. I've just seen your email um, and I will double check your order for you. But it's well and truly on the way. Kathy Ahern, it was lovely to see you looking fabulous on the weekend. Jackie, Leanne. Aww, Kath. Alright, don't make me sad. I'll be in your face all next week. How's that? Is that good? I'll just, you'll just, I'll be there all the time. Actually, uh, Quilters Life members, I'll be back in the new shop shed tomorrow and um, I shall give you a looky look before um, I put it out there to the world. It's really deceiving because um, tomorrow morning at 7 7 30, I meet the tradie that will be doing the final step of completing the transformation of turning a big old shed into our new, um, what do you want to call it? Do, should we use technical term, business premises? I've been calling it the shop shed and I've been told off. The new home of the textile pantry and Chandler's Cottage, right? The last step, which is 7.30, I have to meet. Shop it's not the shop shed. Robert, we said not the shop shed, but we have the shop shed. Um, That's what the wi fis called. Okay. Uh, so we are going, what's this, what's the Wi? Don't tell everyone what the Wi-Fi code is. Hello. Live on Facebook, you wally. He keeps interrupting me and I can't think now. Um, the split system air conditioner man. That is the last thing. To put some heat and some chilling in, which is not critical, but it is a little bit deceiving because uh, even our painter, our best painter in the whole world, said good luck with the opening. I'm thinking, what opening? There's no opening. It's it's all about once the shed is ready, then we can start planning and moving layout and putting everything in. That will still take a long time. So, while it's all magnificent and painted and suspended ceilings and lights and everything, it's still just an empty shed. <laughs> so now we start the long process of moving everything in a logical order we will not be dumping it in the middle for me to sort out it's going straight onto shelves and beautiful shelves new shelves from ikea just sorry didn't mean to involve you <coughs> in family conversations at all but if he is going to stand out there and throw comments in i will do it Pauline Parker, you were looking fabulous in pink on Sunday, may I say. Um, Daisy, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Shirley's there too. Kristen, um, that's, that answers your question, no. Now that, now that the, we have the, the building that we can move the business into, we will move our wholesale business now first. Then we will move the house. And finally, we will move this room uh, and our Chandler's Cottage. That's what goes last. Actually, the last thing out of the building is the Canon copier, and that's a, that is a true fact. Could actually be Rob. I'm not sure yet. He could, <laughs> he could be last out. He stays till the Canon goes. Um, thanks, V. Okay. Uh, yeah, this quilt behind me, Sue, is just a... Sorry, I'll move on a big black blob in the middle of it. Um, this is just my twisted log cabin wreath. So there is one in the room next door that needs to... All of a sudden, I'll, just, I'll do it one day, I'll do it one day. It now needs to be quilted because it has to come to the Christmas in July soiree in the Gamby and then it's got to go to Birmingham. So now I'm down to eight weeks to get it finished. But this is sort of a little bit of a different version because instead of just using two fabrics, I used different shades of two fabrics. 
So I've got two different olive greens and two different yellows. And I, it's a look, it's a real favourite of mine. It's Aussie green and gold. So I thought I would just um, pop it up tonight with a couple of the others either side of it. You, you're all here. Uh, you're all here. Robin, Cheryl, hello. Lynn, Carleen, good evening to you. Oh, thanks, Sylvia. I'm glad you had a good time. Shop Shed reminds me of, okay, you remember that, um, was it the Makona ad with the girl that says, trying to chat up that guy that looked like he was from some exotic country, and she said, oh, I like something a little bit more exotic, like where you're from, and he went, what, Shropshire? So it just reminds me of that. Um, excellent, Catherine, you're all good. Okay, oh, Heather's here too. That's awesome. Okay. So, I think we'll get started. Patricia, good evening and welcome. We're just going to have a bit of fun tonight because um, I know Margaret's not watching. Or if she pops in, it'll be a giveaway. But um, Margaret gave us some of her, and in her words, amazing, when she's right, it is, amazing honey. So she's got one beehive. And um, her and Rob have been talking a lot because Rob's decided that's going to be his thing when we move. He's going to get a couple of hives. I don't think it's just about the honey. There was a discussion about mead. Uh, so I'm not judging on that either until I've tried some. So the last time I had mead was some Philip bought in England. It was very, very good. Anyway, moving on. So uh, she's got hives and she gave us some of her beautiful honey. And she very she joined uh, the Warrigal beekeepers club and went along and everyone takes their honey and on her first night she got best honey of the night and it's like treacle because the hive may or may not have been left a little bit too long but it doesn't matter the honey is divine and so because she gave us a beautiful big jar I've got this gorgeous bee fabric here and so I'm going to make the um, June Chandler's, I can't speak, Chandler's Cottage calendar project with the bee fabric and I actually showed you the bee fabric last time and told you how great it was. And then disco discovered today when I went to tag it under tonight's banner that it never made it up last time. I was really wondering why no one liked the bee fabric. So I just want to show it to you again. Admittedly, we had it amongst a whole heap of other things. Um, so there's very little under tonight's banner. I left... Um, it's still got the tag Garfield on it because Steve was pushing it to get out the door because he's uh, got a two-week uni camp and so it was all kind of we just wanted to get all those under the Australian Sun orders out today um, the special is still actually listed on the website if you do order we send you a little bit of free fabric that coordinates with the one or the ones that you have chosen so you, you might want to if you haven't got any yet or um, it's staying up there till Sunday night because I'm too busy to take it too busy and it doesn't matter, I'm more than happy to stick a little bit of extra fabric in for you. So I'll leave that special up. But there's just a few things. I think I left up a couple of things. Oh, those lovely quilters linens that I had last week. They're um, are down a little bit because we got the, the last of them because they're discontinued from Robert Kaufman. There's a few things in there. I did put the single-sided rubber foam batting in because we're going to use that tonight as well. And, um, and this lovely stuff. So this is the one that... Why doesn't anyone like it? Isn't it fun? When you get up close, it's digitally printed. Um, that come on. See, it's it's all stitched. So it's digitally printed. It looks like, looks like sort of foundation paste strippy hexagons with foundation paste strippy stitched bees. I really like it. It's very kind of, it's almost sort of aztec -y. So I'm going to use this. <clears throat> Probably with under the Australian Sun gold flowering gum because I'll put a little bit of bling on the other side so I'm going to use this for it um, and then we're going to make one up oh and I'm not going to use the fabric tags like the one in the pattern now if you haven't got the calendar or you're not in a course like if you don't have the pattern don't worry I think you'll be able to do it just by watching and it's and even if you've got the pattern, it's it's good to sort of get an idea about it because we'll talk on the way just briefly about how you can change the depth of the walls and the size of it. And it's very, very easy to do. Um, this one, the one that's in the calendar, has got little fabric tags 
that you put into the seams as you go. But with mugs, I'm going to do it a bit differently. I'm actually going to use cord and I'm going to sew it on after. So I don't need to insert that as I go and I don't have to sit here and bore you to tears either while making little fabric tags. I'll tell you about it. But I think, you know, we did those because it was some, you know, you had the fabric there, so it was really easy to make them out of the fabric if you've got the time. But you could use ribbon, lace, cord, anything you like to do those. So, can you believe it's June already? I can't, I just don't, I can't, I can't believe it. So let's just have a quick recap. Um, I was talking to some of the girls on the weekend about what's happening in next year's calendar. And Maria Sapita was there, which was so exciting because... Um, she has given us a fantastic recipe that I'm going to include in a very cheeky way with next year's calendar. Who's here? Deb, good evening to you. Diane Basilman's here and I'm so glad you're here and thank you for coming on the week and it was lovely to see you. Felicity missed it. <laughs> Sorry mate. You'll make it to one. I know you're going to make it to one one day. Um, Rhonda, you are most welcome. Glad you had a good day on Sunday. Sunday was a bit of a party house, wasn't it? Jane, good evening. Sylvia Barry. Oh, my goodness. There you go. All right. So Fiona Woods, too. Hello. How are you? Okay. So we've done our pin cushion. We have done our bag. We have done our pocket sewing caddy, we did our babushka um, keeper, then we did our relaxation pillow last month. Now I wrote the calendar letter to go out and um, Anne reads them to me, I haven't got it and um, we think it failed to send. So I'm doing a combo, I'll just, I don't know why, I'm, I'm not quite sure why it didn't leave the building and when I say fail to send, we didn't push the button which was me or Castle Steve, or I'm not sure. I will do a combo one for you this weekend because I've got a few more ideas as well anyway, um, particularly for this basket. So I'll get one out to you early next week. So make it up as it is, and then I'll throw some other ideas at you that you can use, which is the whole plan. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we are up to June. So we're going to do this one. And if you haven't all made your pecan apple crumble cake yet, it is the perfect weather now to make one up or make two and freeze them because they're absolutely the best recipe to freeze. Just serve them up warm with custard. Just do it. It's, it's a really yummy cake. That was my mum's recipe. And um, I'm just looking at the picture now thinking I need a pecan apple crumble cake in my life within the next week. I really think I do. Yes, I do. Okay, and now just looking ahead... When we get to June, we're going to be doing a bag again and we're going to be doing a lot of pre-shaping and we're going to be playing with Suffolk puffs and things. So next month, if you are doing the calendar or you want to play along, I am going to get Stephen to publish this pattern separately as a digital download next month. Um, this pattern uses a, for next month, a quarter inch bias maker and you'll need a sheet of sandpaper, just medium, medium sandpaper, nick it out of someone else's shed um, if you need to, or next time you're at the hardware store, just grab yourself a sheet or a bit off a sanding belt, something like that, but you're going to need a piece of pre-shaping. And next month's recipe is the orange dessert tort, and that's rather scrummy as well. So if you have an orange treat, or you see oranges on special towards the end of the month, don't forget to grab them so you can make your cake in July as well. Okay, it was very tally silly, wasn't it? Okay, I'll chill now, and we'll turn over to these instructions. And we'll get started. Oh, no, no, I'm going to do this plug first. On the weekend as well, the lovely Catherine gave me a book. And so this is my first book plug for someone. And no, it's not a kickback. I know what you're thinking because she's already given me the book. So Catherine bought this and gave it to me. Now, Catherine lives up in the Dandenongs, and, which is a cold climate. So during lockdown as a community project in Cockatoo to keep everyone kind of sane, occupied and learning and motivated and involved in the community, they did this fantastic community project which was creating and publishing this beautiful book. And she gave me a copy because it's all about growing food in cold climates. So if you're <laughs> if you're kinda Megan, everyone else up north, just take a break for a minute. 
because this is about us guys down here where it gets really, really cold. Or you could be up in the Blue Mountains. You could even be up on the ushers on the tablelands up in Queensland. It gets very, very cold at night. But this is all about growing in a cold climate. And it's absolutely fantastic. So this is a non-profit um, initiative. And they do have copies for sale. So I would love, if you would like one, just email me at info at Chandler's Cottage and I will pass your details on to Catherine and she will let you know how you can get your hands on one. And if need be, I will go and see her, grab a whole heap of copies, pay for them for you and bring them back and post them out because I just think they're brilliant. It is just the best little book. And what I love about it, you know, these, these are real people. They are not celebrity chefs or anything. They are real people living in the community that know their stuff and know about growing in cold climates there's broccoli soup and cheesy cretons and there's no cooked mexican wraps and there's there's just all the different everything that's really easy to grow in a cold climate in the way of veggies including garlic and ginger and herbs and lemongrass and then we're on to fruit we've got melons we've got nut trees we've got the whole lot in here um and i have fallen in love with this book um i know megan <laughs> Megan would love one. I'm going to have to get one for you, Megan. I'll send you one up for your birthday. But also, um, Mar grabbed mine and had a read of it and then promptly ordered some as well for her and family. But it's just... Look at the photography on it. It is such a nice book. And you're going to die... How, how much do you think they are? Come on. The $20. Because it's a non-profit, government, government initiative, community thing. So... This, so there'll be that and a little bit of postage. If you'd like one, they're not on my website or anything because it's not mine, but just email me info at Chandler's Cottage and I will organise it for you because I just think this is the best. And it's still, there's still so many stories coming out of COVID like this that are just fantastic success stories of, you know, the silver lining on everything that we've been through that I love. A little bit like me having my boys at home for another year. When they went off gallivanting around the world, they were stuck at home with us. Okay, should we do this? Being silly now. We shall do this. All right, did I miss anybody? Fiona, um, email me. Don't just, because I'll lose it all later. Okay, Denise, yes, right, okay. So email me, please, and then I will collate all the emails together, all your email addresses, and I will shoot them through to Catherine. Yolanda, how are you? Oh, Donna's here too. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you're here. Leanne says it's been minus three here in Warwick, Queensland already. Yes, I forget about up in the up in the hills and the tablelands. Yeah, Tassie, perfect felicity, absolutely perfect. So I thought, well, we'll get some sales for them. I don't mind doing that at all, and um, and I think that they would really like, they would really appreciate it that someone else is actually enjoying their work. It's not going to last long, is it? All right. So the project that we're going to do tonight is this little basket. Now, I think I've already confessed up to... Confessed? Yes. Confessed? Yes. Before that, I never finished the one that's in the photo in the calendar. I was in such a hurry to finish the calendar and quite horrified today when I went for a little bit of a search for the photo that's still on my phone that I took. Because all the photos in the calendar were actually just taken on my phone. They're not done with any of the cameras in here. They're straight off this. So, and in fact, I think this in some ways is better quality now on the old iPhones than the, than the cameras we use for filming. So, I found it. And do you know the date on it? The 24th of November. That is not happening this year. I will not still be taking photos for the following year's calendar on the 24th of November. But what I found as I set set everything up to take the photo, I can you see what I've done? I've actually missed <laughs> the final line of stitching through all of it. I've done these three and not that one. And I just remember going, nope, we'll just turn it around. They won't see that I haven't stitched it. So now I'm now I'm fessing up. But I'm just going to tie these back up so you can see the final effect so that it is essentially a sandwich. It is a sandwich plate or server, but it's also a sandwich of two bits of fabric and a piece of batting. But the trick to it is, is that we cut squares or darts or whatever you want to call them, gussets, 
out of the corners of our batting. You can see, look, not finished properly on this edge either. Oh, it's all done with mirrors, isn't it? And again, that can't happen this year because I'm planning on having all of the projects on display. Um, well, some of them will be at the Christmas in Soiree in Nagambi. Uh, then they will go to England <laughs> um, to, to promote and take orders for the calendar and the kits. And then they will be back, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say kind of loud and proud, at the uh, Quilters Life pre-Christmas gathering at the new Chandler's Cottage before the end of the year. So I have to have them all looking very swish-wish. But that, um, that's essentially what you get. It's just a really lovely little practical thing. And the nice thing about it, if you want to make one to send to someone, you can send it to them flat just with a little note telling them to push in the corners and tie them up and they will get their little basket. So if you wanted to send one flat to someone with a box of chocolates or something that they could then put in there, thank you Sylvia for the chocolates, by the way, um, then that would be really nice to do. So I'm gonna set that aside and I'm going to look at the instructions. So it's a sandwich of three. We need a 14 inch square for the outside, a 14 inch square, 14 inch square for the inside and you can make up your mind at the absolute last minute which one's going where and in fact you can probably turn it the other way around anytime you like. Um, you're going to need eight ties because you've got a pair on each corner and then we need a piece of firm batting. We're going to use the the, the silver single-sided rubber foam batting. I literally have had an inch of that. It's got nothing to do with that um, that I can't talk and we're going to use the single-sided but you could get away with um, iron on as well I mean um, and sewing not double sided iron on so you can use sewing or you can use the single sided it doesn't really matter you do want something firm though so if you did want to use up your wool batting scraps if you've got some squares that are over 14 inches trim them down but if you wanted to use wool batting what I would do is also apply a lightweight or firm um, adhesive interfacing to one or both of your squares of fabric because you really do need that body to keep the sides up. So if you're gonna run with all of your scrap leftovers, make sure that you've got a bit of guts in there with some stabilizer interfacing on at least one of your bits of fabric. So anyway, pop that over there. So I'm going to chop into this. Now I have allowed half a meter <laughs> on the website um, so that I can chop off the bit to make make up our Buzzy B one. And I do have, from years ago, absolutely years ago, a really nice uh, um, honey biscuit recipe. So I thought, how cool would it be if we had this? Then we can serve up the honey bickies in the middle. Ah, oh, that would help. A rotary cutter. Hang on, I'll grab one. They probably both went off to soiree and not back. Um, Christmas soiree. So Steve's done the new Christmas flies today. Not that I know that we're actually going to need them for long. We've got a few spots left on the Saturday at Nagambi, not many. And we've got a few, a few more for the Sunday. But if you are planning on coming, please don't leave it too long to book because um, we don't take as many in the Nagambi Hall as we do at Garfield. It's just a, that little bit, it feels bigger when you walk in the door because it's got those gorgeous big high ceilings and the big art deco stage and everything. But in terms of floor space and the tables that we've got to work with, we actually take less there. So uh, we don't go to 100, we go to 80 in there. So we haven't got many left. But if you would like to come, please um, hop on to try booking or have a look on the Needleworkers Soiree Facebook page um, for the links and everything. I will come back to you and talk about it again on Monday night. We're going to have a little bit of a Christmassy night on Monday night because I will talk Needleworkers Soiree and I will have images if not the samples of Margaret's projects with me. I will be able to reveal what I am doing and um, I've actually just changed one of my projects. 
but I'll be able to tell you what I'm doing. I haven't heard from Karen yet on what she's doing, but I'll tell you a little bit about it and how it's all going to work. It is in our normal soiree format, but with the Christmas theme. So I'll tell you more about that. And then also on Monday night, we will be launching our uh, Christmas Advent boxes for this year. So if you are in a quilter's life, you will have early access to those over the weekend. You get first dibs along with our um, soiree attendees if you signed our little uh, clipboard chart of interests, uh, interested parties on the weekend. And then I'll be letting everyone else know about it on Tuesday night. So yes, that's very exciting. I'm very excited. So Steve's got that all set up for me on the website. It's it's to the point where it's ready to um, to open up for bookings. There's a couple of little things I still need to do for part of the special offer, but I'll be able to show you all of that on Monday night as well. So we'll talk Christmas in July and we shall talk Christmas Advent. So I'm trying to call it an Advent box because we all got very confused this year having a wall calendar for this year and then the advent it was just a little bit which one are you talking about that sort of is what went on what do, you, what do you think do you think we should put this on the back oh I think I am because it's the color it's sort of gold but it's the color of honey look, look at that salvage oh, how funky is that I'll give it it's wide but it's a very funky selvage. If you were a selvage collector, if you collect your selvages and to put into something, you're going to love that. That's amazing. Very, very cool. So this company is Dandelion Fabrics. Um, <clears throat> they were a new fabric for me. I had not bought from them before and I'm very, I think I said last time, I'm very impressed with the quality. Yes, Fiona, you did, but you're also in a quilter's life, so you're like a double whammy. You're fine. You're all fine. It's all good. Um, so we'll have this little bit of honey here. Yeah, so I'm going to keep my eye out for what else this um, company does. I oh, Every time I think about going digital, I just go, mm, I'm too scared. I'm too scared. But also I know that my fabric agent does deal with some of the big digital printing companies and I just think, nah, I'll leave that to them. I'll stick with I'll stick with screen printing my designs. Oh, I have to tell you that um, that amazing chrysanthemum ombre fabric that we had that all went on the weekend. I have to apologise to Carol Newton because I told her it was all gone, she wanted more, and then the website had not been updated and I think she thought she got excited I was wrong but there is absolutely none left so I've taken it offline I am going to try and get some more because a lot of people wanted more but that design I have um, spoken to my guys that I do my fabric with already and I think I'm going to do an ombre leaf one to go with my Japanese panel coming up so that will just delay my panel a month or two but I think I want to coordinate like that to go with my panel because it's just beautiful wasn't it I'm not like it's not a plagiarizing thing but it's sort of a well it is a bit but I've got three or four ombres that timeless treasures have done over time like that and um, I think it wouldn't hurt me to make an effort to design one quickly to go with it all right so that's our two pieces of fabric what did I miss good evening Miss Linda James how are you did you have a good trip home? I hope so. Janet, good evening. Oh, Jenny Wren, you are so late. But we love you anyway. It's all good. Okay, I've got these. Now, I swear, well, I do swear, but not on camera. I swear I had, huh, it's disappeared. I swear I had a little bit of this. Just a bit. It's all right. I need a, I need a bigger desk. Uh, and I can't say I'm actually, am I going to get one? I don't know that I am going to have a bigger one when we move. Not for the studio. Oh, 
Yes, we will. The um, I have all the room in the world, really, to film, and I hope to move around a fair bit. But what I will have to do is um, mic up because the room is so big. If I did it in the whole cavernous room, um, <laughs> it'd be a bit echoey. So we will we will do that. I'm just going to chop a bit of this off. So that we can get cracking. Uh, I did get a new roll of this because we had it at the soiree and we did chew through a fair bit. So I got another one. So there's plenty of stock and I've also got a roll set aside to take to bring up, send up to um, Shepparton for my workshop. Which is fast approaching, which is why I have to stay here and be a good girl next week because no one in a course of life is talking to me because I'm being slack and um, shepherd and, and that's it for next week. No playing in the new rose garden. This doesn't need playing in until August. It's just so tempting. Okay. Anyway, I'll give you a little bit more of a look around when I'm down there. It's going to rain on Saturday, but hopefully it's nice tomorrow or I'll give you a little bit of a look around. <coughs> uh, everywhere I turn there's something that needs doing so that's a that's in a way that's a good thing and along the way I might ask your advice on things like growing rhubarb and asparagus and all those sorts of things because there's lots of that stuff to cover off too and all of it's just you know great inspiration Okay, so now I've got my three bits ready to go here. Now, keep in mind, if you are going to follow the pattern that's in the calendar, you will also make up your little tags to insert. Okay, with um, your piece of batting, what we need to do is cut away a three and a half inch square from each corner. So, this is where you can really play around with this pattern and you can decide what shape you want your basket to be. So this one with its three and a half inch squares cut away. Yes, yeah, Sylvia, I know, I know. I've already taken it down. <laughs> Jenny Wren, that's good. Um, yes, I've already taken it down there in a basket. It's sitting there waiting uh, down there, ready to go. And yeah, I know, I'm sort of, I have to go back to what I was doing, Sylvia, and do, um, you know, the hour a day thing, which will probably be night time. Okay, so there's my three and a half there. So that's what I effectively need to cut away, that corner like that. And what that is, is inside here, that's that. Okay, it looks a little bit smaller because it's taken in here on the edges uh, into the seam allowance, but that's what we've got to cut. So if you wanted, and I'll keep going with these, if you wanted to make it a different shape, you could mess around with this dart. Um, and what I mean is if you went smaller, and you didn't have this as big, you're going to get end up with shorter walls on your basket. But if you actually made them bigger, then um, what would happen is the square that's left in the middle is smaller and you would get higher sides. Now the only thing about going with higher sides, they'll look fantastic. I've seen them done where there's only like a little bit in the middle, it's almost like a vase. But what you, base, vase, but what you might want to do if you do do that, is I want to see another um, thing, something in here to secure it. So it might be a little, you know, like a little button and a little loop or something, but you might need a little bit more to hold those sides up if you go up taller. But look, you could even just, just go to four, go to four and a half, just have a little bit of a play and do them at different heights. The other thing too, it doesn't have to be a square. We've started with a, we've, we've used a square in the pattern, but you could also do a rectangle. 
so you could have a long basket. So you can imagine, take it to the other extreme and, extreme and have a long one with the same size and short ends, and then you've got one for a bread basket or, some, or a biscuit basket that's lovely and long, or to hold all of your pens or your knitting needles or something like that on the table. So you can really mess around with it. It's the, the darts have to be uniform, but your, um, the actual shape that you start with doesn't need to be. So you can mess with it. You can really mess with it. That is for you. Okay, I've got one to go here. <clears throat> uh, speaking to Megan, our mate Megan, up in, um, up in Odeon, and yes, Melissa, it is a great shape for a scrap basket. I was having a chat with Megan, and she said she's already started making her, um, her sort of, she does craft markets at Christmas, and she's already started making things for those, and I thought, you know, that is... That is so what we should be doing on long winter nights, isn't it? And we say it every year, but she's actually this year, she started when she meant to and when she should, and that is fantastic. So, you know, for charity raising, fates, for school, you know, school fates for, um, for your own benefit, for your own profit, if you've got a craft market in your town, let me cut these out, that you can have a little stall at and you can get in and use all your scraps up. Um, and Megan and I were discussing it because she just ordered a whole heap of zips and pulls and she's pulling out all her stash of orientals from ages ago and her original Under the Australian Sun <laughs> um, and she's just making up stuff and then it's all sitting there and then come November a few markets or a few sales on Etsy or something and it's like her Christmas club money and pays for Christmas and I think that's just great. I'm liking the idea. I'm not throwing these out, am I? I know I know some of you will go, no, nope. Lisa, keep them and turn them into coasters, so I'm not even going to fool you. I'll just put them over here and make them disappear later. Okay, so this is our piece that's kind of in there and our base. So we need to layer these up. So we take the inside of the basket, right side up, and this one would actually have the ties pinned onto it. So you make your ties and you actually position them three and a quarter inch, three and a quarter inches in from each corner. Now three and a quarter is significant because it means it will it'll butt up against the edge of this when we put it over the top. Then you layer the inside basket, so right side up, that's it, and the batting piece. So here we go. So I'm going to put it up this way because this is the sticky side and I know that's going to hit that. And then the outside basket right side down. No, I've done it wrong. Holy dolly. Outside basket right side down. I bet you're all sitting there looking at yours going, she's wrong, she's going to do it wrong, she's going to do it wrong. They go together because we need to see them sticking on the outside. Then this one over the top and it'll be sticky side down. I've just done everything in reverse in my head. Okay, so pin the layers at the corners and near the corners of the batting. I did mark tonight wonder clips and I took just a little bit off them just to make them a little bit special. So pop that one there. I did see a lot of you chewed into my thread stands on the weekend. If you don't mind... They were pristine perfect and full. You should see them now. Not impressed. Um, no, I'm very glad to see that a lot of you were very co were confident in choosing your confetti and your Afina threads. That made me very, very happy because they are beautiful threads and uh, I'm, we'll I'm planning a very special kind of, well, let's just say, Everything will have its place uh, when we move, and um, I'm just thinking, discussing with myself at the moment how the thread stands will be displayed. Whether they'll be all together, they'll be split up between fabric shelves, they'll be in the centre of the room on a bench. I haven't decided yet. So, what I think I'll do, I will get Jennifer Moore from Wonderful Australia and Asta and Anne to come down and consult and have a chat with you and me at the same time 
on Facebook about threads. I think that would be a really good idea. We might just do that. Okay, so it says to pin at the corner. This is a weird looking thing. It always freaks me out when we get to this point. So, very strange, isn't it? But you can see what's going to happen is that when we sew right around, we're going to pull in these bits, okay, as we go. And then what happens is we do this cross section through later and sew right through and then that secures a little bit of a sleeve here against the edge of this batting. So we're going to go right round here. We do need to leave a gap and that's probably the only difficult thing about this project is we're going to have this batting in our outer seam and we need to leave a little bit of it open. So um, I haven't sewn that one up properly, that was such a rush job. But what you do need to do is slip stitch it closed and then top stitch. I'll probably cheat again a little bit tonight to show you, but that's essentially how is the best way to finish it off. So we'll head over to the machine. And um, oh, I have tagged this and the olive flower and gum tonight because they were, whether anyone actually noticed or not, they were they were out of stock or down to the last bolt. I can't I can't remember. But the olive was really, really important to get reprinted at the same time as under the Australian sun coming because this guy here really does not live well. This one. He just can't live without his friend. So this, of all of the marriages of colours for me, that to me is the most critical one out of all of them um, to have that olive green here to go with that orange and they match up really nice so yeah oh, I trashed the stand I'll put it back uh, when you've got your when you do get your under the Australian Sun fabric in the mail your new your new Waratahs or mega mega Waratahs as we call them if you do need any help with colours or anything, please let me know. Um, now that it is here, I have started cutting out my big quilts to make. I need to make quite a few big quilt tops to take with me to England. And I am cutting out and there will be kits for Southern Jewels 1 and 2 and some new ones that I'm doing. But if you have your own projects that you're doing at the moment and you do need some help or so you need some swatches, just email me what you've got or your order number and say, Lisa, I got these help what goes with it and I'll be more than happy to um, email you the links to them on the website send you some samples whatever you need that's absolutely fine I'm just going to stick a couple more in here oh um, those that are coming to Nagambi started on the menu I'm doing pistachio shortbread with white chocolate drizzle do you know I because I you know I went nuts with the Christmas in Garfield food and I just Christmas and cooking and so I've started my list. Margaret's doing her award-winning Florentines again just before you ask. You don't need to ask, she's already onto it. Melissa, I saw a pacifier. Okay. Oh, has she? Oh well that's lovely. Send me the link, Melissa, so I can see it. I have seen some beautiful quilts. True, Fiona. Uh, you could. I have seen some beautiful quilts lately done with Melba. Um, who posted them? Someone put them up. Oh, Michelle Marvick kept sending them to me. There's some stunning stuff out there at the moment that in my lifetime I will never get the time or have the initiative or the talent to make, and they're doing them with Melba. Um, I don't know if I shared them across to my page or not. I'll have to go back and have a look. There's some incredible stuff. Okay. You know I'm probably going to go weird on you for a little while, don't you? You know, I'll come in one day and go, today we're going to applique cabbages or rabbits or rabbits eating my cabbages or something. I don't know. I might go a little bit funny for a while, but there will be roses as well and lavender with a few gum leaves in the background. How big do you think? I do, don't want too big a hole. I think it's important that we do catch some of this seam around the edge. 
Um, I've got my walking foot on, as you can see, and we need to whiz around this whole thing. So, sew around all four sides with a quarter inch seam, being careful not to catch any of the loose ends of the ties. Leave a three inch opening for turning through. Turn through and press, press well. Chop. We can do that. So walking foot on, please, because um, <clears throat> we've got a bit of baggage to get through here. If you want to have a want to wing it with your jewel feed, you can. Um, you will want matching thread. I couldn't decide, so I've got gold on the bottom and, and black on the top. And uh, I've got a three inch stitch, and I'm going to stick with that. Hello, my friend. It's been a week. I haven't been on this one for a while. Which means he probably needs an oil. Oh, it's not too bad. Now this is going to confuse your machine if it's very high tech because you're going to be sewing some of the time. Who turned off the hobble foot? Oh no, it's there. Um, <clears throat> and then the rest of the time it's going to be on it's going to be on fabric some of the time, batting some of the time. So if you've got a high-tech machine and it doesn't like switching, you might just need to take the a moment as you switch between the two to change your tension. Oh, listen, I... To, oh, sorry, I'm in soiree mode still, and I must pop it up on the, the page. I did not thank everybody on the weekend that made the effort to wear their pearls. Because I, if you if you don't come to the soirees, you, or you don't know, it's a secret women's soiree stitches business, except for Danny that comes with his wife, Marie, and he's an amazing knitter. But we wear our pearls, and it's just sort of like our soiree thing and it's a good opportunity for everyone to get out their pearls that they don't wear anymore or your mums or your grandmothers or your aunts or whatever and give them a good air and wear them and I must say, for the, I would say at this one on the weekend we had a huge attendance of pearls there were bracelets, necklaces uh, Melissa wasn't there, there wasn't a tiara but there was um, there, I had my earrings and bracelet and, and matching necklace and I wore some one day and some the next but I must commend everybody for the pearl effort because there was just so many in the room and it's fantastic you know and once you get up to about half the room wearing their pearls all of a sudden everyone realizes what's going on but with Christmas soiree yes you can still wear your pearls but if you wish to Christmas things up Please do, because it's just going to be so much fun. Or wear a bit of Christmas, you know, colours with your pearls. Uh, and I was speaking to Lisa, another Lisa, at the Centre Town um, Motel in the Main Street, and she's got a few rooms left, and they're very reasonably priced. Uh, Margaret has gone and done the inspection. That's where we're staying. And she says they're lovely and clean and they're adequate and they're nice and they don't smell funny and they're all great and they're just straight walking distance to the hall. So if you haven't booked yet, I would give Lisa a call as your starting point for accommodation. All right, there we go. So we're right round. It still looks funny, doesn't it? There we go. So, who doesn't have... Melissa says she's back at the centre town as well. No, Fiona, I know you don't have pearls. But you don't need them for the next one. Go Christmas, buddy. Go Christmas. Go Christmas. If you don't have pearls, it's fine. Oh, no. Who ate my porridge? Yeah, I know. Who turned off my hobber foot? Well, I was a little bit suspicious. Yes, a uh, Josie. Josie had her mom's three wife. It's it's just lovely wearing things like that. And the project that we did on um, Saturday as well, the little brooch bag. 
just any little bag pattern you've got with a little flap like the one we did Saturday is just really lovely to put all your brooches on so all those beautiful brooches that you know that our mums aunts grandmothers had that we perhaps don't make an effort to wear and we just make a little make a little bag with a little flap on the front and then you use the brooch to embellish the front and it's just a nice it's just a nice thing to do and then you've you know you've got an endless variety of evening bags. I've trimmed my corners but not too much. And we'll just turn all this through. I could have I've, I've resisted the temptation to iron yet because <clears throat> um, at some point that adhesive on that single sided will go down onto the B fabric. Pack that through. So probably what's going to happen with this one tonight is I will also finish it with not all of the sewing done on across it because I still need to go back and slip stitch this opening closed. But I mean I've been gas bagging while I've been doing this. You could knock out, I reckon you could knock out easily six of these in an hour. I'm not kidding. Make one and then... So it is just your two squares together, but we've got this funny little shaped bit of foam batting in there. Um, iron's on, and I think I'm going to wing it. I don't think there's any water in here. I'll push that in. That's it. So steam's off because I'm on my mat. We'll just give this a little iron. So now. That adhesive side of my single foam batting is sticking onto our B fabric. It's pretty, isn't it? I mean, if you're a hexagon fussy cutter, I'm not saying any more. I'm just saying, have a look at the bees because it's so good. Okay. So now in front of, I don't know, is New Father Brown coming up? Isn't there, there's a new series starting as well next week on on Amazon or Stan that looks like a good Aussie drama but something like that I just need half an hour or so of mindless television to sit and slip stitch up this opening and <clears throat> by iron that that's going to stick to the adhesive yes and then I will just take my time and I will carefully turn that under Gee, that rubber foam holds the heat, doesn't it? So, if I put my little clips on there first. Who said what? Nice. <laughs> Sylvia, I did say that for you. I did. I actually said that for you, that the room smelled nice. Though so I know you'll head home each night, but that you were in my head when I said it. Judy, good evening. Um, Sandra, welcome. Kathy, my old ones broke. I took them off after the soiree last year. Guess what Santa bought me? Oh, new ones for Christmas. Really? With matching earrings. Oh my God, that is so good, Kath. That's very nice. Well, mine, uh, my pearls that I wore on the weekend, I... Um, Robert gave me the bracelet on our wedding day. He gave me my necklace when Philip was born and he gave me the earrings when Steve was born. So there you go. Okay. That. Gee, would have been in trouble if I'd gone back for a third, wouldn't he? <laughs> I always, I don't know. I'll, he's probably listening. I'll have to ask later. I always suspect that he bought them all in one hit. I'm not sure because they all match. They're all beautiful. They all match. Okay. So that needs slip stitching. So across and do that, okay. But we can do the other sides. So top stitch all four edges. So now we've got to zoom around all of these. Now I'm going to come back and do that later because I want to do these lines. This is the main thing. That slip stitch on the edge, that is really just to make sure that it just all sits really nice and snug. And because we've got the thicker uh, rubber foam batting inside, if you don't top stitch it down at the top, this is going to roll around a lot. So 
please do that but I know I can get away with doing it after this next step what we want to do <clears throat> hello Cindy where have you been it's been weeks well it has I haven't been here have I Meredith says I absolutely love my first soiree oh <gasps> Oh, excellent, Meredith. I'm so glad you came. Garfield is a better place for our little soirees, isn't it? Mind you, I don't know. I think I think Brian at Brewster's Cafe was kind of happy to see the end of us. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so have a think back. We've got these little darts that we did that are three and a half. So our rubber foam now, because we've got a seam allowance in here, it sort of comes, still comes up to about here. Mine's now on about three and a quarter in from the edge here. Okay, that's where it's sitting. And then you've also got, if you have done them, you have put, got your ties sitting in here. And that's why we put them in at the three and a quarter inch mark. Okay, so just keep all that in mind because if you're doing your own and you're doing four, then you're now going to, if you did four inch darts, you're going to want yours at four and a quarter, five at five and a quarter, two at two and a quarter. So right there on mine, if I put them in, which is where I'm going to put Margie Moo's ones later, I'm going to be attaching these in here, okay? So you would have your tags, these coming out here, and now sitting next to that, we're going to draw our lines that are three, inches in parallel to this whole edge down here. So uh, I've got, have I got a black friction in here? I do not. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, I'll do it with a chalk pen. So now I'm marking on this side, obviously, so that I can see it. So you're gonna draw a line straight down through there. And you're going to do the same on every side and this is what's going to give us our lovely little gusseted darts on each corner um, Diane Baselman, sorry, I just wanted to say um, when I introduced her to my mum, my mum came on Sunday my mum and dad were there on Sunday, I had the whole family there over the weekend mum and dad came, Phil and Amp came Steve was there. We only miss Lulu because she had to work but um, elsewhere, but uh, Steve's girl. But anyway, the family was there. And I introduced Mum to Diane because um, we discovered that Mum realised that it had to be. But Diane's um, mother-in-law was my kindergarten teacher in Croydon, Mrs Baselman. But then when I introduced Mum to Diane on the weekend, who had set the whole thing up, did you notice it took mum a second to actually realise it because I think she looked at you and gone, that's just not possible because you were too young to be, because she, she said to me later, it can't be right. And I said, it is. And so there you go, Di, she thought you were way too young to have been Mrs. Basilman's daughter-in-law. So yes, it was, um, yes, yeah, small world. Very, very small world. But so lovely that my mother dragged out photos of me at kindergarten. For Diane to show to her, to Mrs. Baselman. Okay, I have done that three inch parallel line round all sides, so I'm going to do a couple of them. Actually, I'll need to do I'll need to do two of them, yes, so I can show you how it works with this little pinch bit on the corner. So we'll just pop back over to the machine. We'll still leave on that walking foot because again it's going to go through just fabric and then it's going to go through the batting. It's going to be quite predominant because I've got black in here. Okay, down we go. So probably a little finishing stitch or a little reverse at the start is in order because we want to keep it nice and neat. So I'm going to do a little finishing stitch at the start or a securing stitch. We'll stitch straight through. Now, <coughs> Um, yes, while I'm doing this, if you are wondering how much the advent calendars are, you're wondering how much money to bot off your children for what they didn't supply for Mother's Day or for upcoming birthday or whatever it is, next year or this year's are 125. Yes, that is more than last year's. 
um, plus postage. And I don't mind telling you, no, we, we, we didn't make money. We probably lost money last year. But we had a lot of fun and we learnt a lot. And this year's, uh, I would like to say, a quantum leap on last year's. There have been a lot of little projects that have been specifically designed just for the advent. Um, I have sourced stuff literally from all over the world for it. I have had things made, designed, blended. I know, blended, that's a word. Um, and I have had a lot of fun. There are a couple of little projects that will run over one or two days. There are things to give, there are things to keep, there are things to inspire. Um, and I'm also hoping that the projects, you will really like them and they are all really quick and easy to do and then you'll have the time to make more for Christmas. So if I've done, uh, if I've made a Christmas decoration or something that would be really good to give away, we do those earlier in the month. I'm not going to throw a complicated Christmas decoration at you two days before Christmas. So I've sort of also planned which days you get things on based on, on what day of the month you're um, opening it. And um, I'll mention it again, it'll be on the website and I'll mention it again next week. But um, also, if you're in a quilter's life, I'm doing a post every day in December that goes with the envelope. So I will probably in November, or when they're all finished, I'm going to spend a couple of weeks myself and I'll do a couple of days and I'm going to open the envelope that you're going to open on the 3rd of December. And I'm going to do the demo and make it and film it. And then every day on a quilt life in December at 10 a.m., the posts will go up. So you'll be able to get everyone out of the house, get organized whenever you want, make a cup of tea, open your envelope, click on the quilt life and make it with me. Or do whatever else we're going to do with it on that day. So that's, um, that's the plan. So that will just be an extra bonus. It's not extra anything. It'll be part of your membership. Okay. That's the plug, but we'll talk about that Monday night. All right, I have done this little dart here for you. So I would, I will do all of these like that. And now we've got this in here. So this is what happens. This folds up just like that because there's no batting in these little corner bits here. So that's why we cut those darts out. It won't work without that. Um, if, look. I'm going to say it's you could if you wanted to make this a little bit stiffer particularly if you're going to make these darts deeper that's where that little bit of interfacing on your fabric is going to come in really handy but just for now because I've still got to go back and put these little ties on for Margaret's I'm just going to do that so you can see how it sits up now it is really fully reversible so I'm going to leave it up to you and I will decide when I've finished hers which way I'm going to put it up because I need to put something inside it. I can't just give it to her. And I'm not giving her honey, obviously. But if I make a honey cake, I will see how big it comes out, or honey biscuits, and I might go that way and have it up that way as my basket with, the, with it folded in. So you see the bees in the middle. <clears throat> now that you can see how it's done as well, there are many opportunities for you to enhance it, embellish it, do whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to dis discuss a few more of those um, with the Calendar Club guys in the email to you. The one thing I'll just mention now that I'm not going to be able to help myself, but I will make some up myself to give us gifts. Um, I need to take some gifts for some special people in England that I'm going to, and obviously I will fussy cut the square from here. And um, I will do Waratahs. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That literally from here to here is 14 inches. So I will def definitely do a few of those because I just think I would love to be able to give one to someone with big fat Waratah right in the middle. So I will make some of those up as well to take. In fact, I may even do some up as little kits to take uh, to Birmingham. If you are in the UK, <clears throat> the stock has left. It's on its way. It will be there by uh, mid-June. It's going to actually arrive nice and early for us, which is fantastic. So it will be in there. We'll um, be able to get there, pick it up. I've actually got more leaving 
um, in two weeks time because this arrived here so we're boxing up um, these new releases and we're sending them over so there is now a, a huge amount of work to do in doing some custom made kits so it's sort of it's all a bit disjointed we sent all the fabric off and the kits off but now the samples are here so I make the samples up and finish the patterns and pop them in when I get there so there's a lot of stuff happening we are on stand E70 so there'll be us um, Vivian at Purple Stitches will be E68 there's no one in the middle at E69 at the moment but we pity the poor person that takes that stand but we've got a lovely big corner stand so um, I'll be there with Miss Margaret Upston as my very very special um, guest designer mate and please mind the stand while I go to the loo person now we've got the stand together in Birmingham so um, it's going to be a lot of fun so if you are watching from the UK it is not long now till Birmingham Festival of Quilts and we will be there which is great all right are we all good Petra no I haven't got the up boots yet she's you're funny you're so funny so uh, no I sent Vivian back to the drawing board to double check what size up boots she wanted um, yes, so I was talking to Petra, I have to take Vivian at Purple Stitches Ugg Boots because Ugg Boots guys in the UK are about $170 a pair. However, at the factory outlet, 15 minutes down the road from me, they're about 70 And she has two very, very talented um, figure ice skating boys. So she spends a lot of time at 6 o'clock in the morning at the ice skate rink and I can totally relate to that after Stephen. Um, being in ice hockey and after years and years of managing hockey teams in winter so I need to pick some magnificent pairs of, of boots and take them over for her so no thanks Petra for reminding me but yeah it's it's on the list and I think um, after spending a few nights at our beautiful new home with very very high ceilings and I haven't got rugs on the floor yet and I need to put I took down curtains and I haven't put new ones up yet. I also need some mud boots. <laughs> so I'll be getting mine next week as well anyway. Oh, Jenny Miller, you show off. Can you, can, you, can you see what she's just written? She has already finished four of the six projects and the other two are half done. <gasps> oh, no, Linda, there's no sleep. I've just seen your note. No, no, no sleep. No, that's not true. Um, I'm going to head off now and have, have dessert. Just a little bit of a little bit of a treat dessert uh, with Rob from the telly, and then pack down, um, and then I'll be back here on Sunday. Got to go and meet that guy tomorrow and um, do some do some stuff down at the new place. So what that means is, if you need me tomorrow, and I do apologise in advance, but if you need me tomorrow, please email me because my this you know is attached. You've seen me. This is attached to me, and all my emails come through onto my phone. And I check it probably about every five minutes. So if you do need me, email me and I will email you back or ring you. Um, and if you can wait till Sunday, just say, Lisa, when you're back Sunday, just get in touch and I will do that for you. Uh, and it's anything else you need, you know where to find me. Um, Linda has purple Ugg boots. Do you, why does that not surprise me? <laughs> of course you do. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. Yes, Melissa knows what I'm talking about. Rub and DFO is also a good spot. Um, but all around Moorabbin are the original factories that you can go to. So, who's still got their Ugg boots? Nancy Cook, you funny thing. But they do last, don't they? All right. All right, thank you. Oh, it's so lovely to see you all again. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And um, also, air to everyone that was there on the weekend. So, I will see you on Monday night. And we will have some Chrissy fun. And, um, yeah, I look forward to it. Oh. There's so much stuff I didn't tell you tonight. Like, I've just got notification of all the new fabric ranges that are coming out of the US in the next two weeks and all that sort of stuff. But I'll come back to you. We'll talk about that on Monday night. You have a lovely Friday. Have a fantastic weekend, won't you? And I'll see you Monday. Good night, everyone. Bye.